Hi guys, Jay here for Full Time Devils. I'm joined by the Peaky Pundit and we're going to be talking about United's pre-season game against Spurs. It's been a good pre-season so far. I think it's three wins out of three, seven goals scored, none conceded. Peaky, looking at this game, this is obviously going to be the biggest test. Just talking about momentum, United have got a little bit of momentum. I know it's yeah. only been pre-season friendlies, but how important do you think it is to keep that sort of momentum going and keep winning these games and putting these performances in? Yeah, definitely. I think, look, we've started well. And Oli said it's all stepping stones. Each game is a stepping stone gearing up to the opening game of the season against Chelsea. Um, he's going to be keen to carry that momentum through. Uh, obviously, look, Spurs are going to provide a bit more of a stiffer test for us. Um, I'm looking forward, actually, to see how we set up defensively, you know, without the ball. Uh, so far, we've seen that high press. And I think that's the kind of style of play Oli's going to be carrying forward into the new, you know, new season uh, for the majority of games. But yeah, really looking forward to the game tomorrow and just to see how the kind of players react, what kind of 11 he starts with as well. As I think that will give us an indication of what the main bulk of that starting 11 will be for the Chelsea game. We'll, we'll move on to Spurs in a little while. You spoke then about fitness and the high press. How important do you feel it is that Oli gets the players as fit as he wants them because what happened at the back end of last season we all know we were here for the Cardiff game which was sort of yeah. the end of the season but probably the low point where everything tailed off and a lot of that was blamed on fatigue by some some people saying that the players weren't fit and that they were sort of because of the World Cup and all the rest of it and not having a great pre-season and the way Oli had changed the system they hadn't been able to cope with it how important do you think it is that Oli gets the players up to the fitness levels he needs. Yeah, I think it's majorly important. I think, look, when he first came in and we went on that fantastic run of form, um, I think it was because of them first sort of few games that, you know, he wanted to play that high attacking, pressing football, which we did. Um, but then obviously with fatigue and injuries set back, and then we had to kind of shuffle it up. You know, we had to shuffle the whole pack. We saw the whole kind of system change and we didn't quite know towards the end of the back end of last season what our style of play was. So I think he was just keen to get the season over and done with um, in whatever kind of state that was, um, just so we could regroup, get a proper pre-season out of these players. I think people misunderstand as well. Pre-season is probably the most important time as well of any preparation going into a season because that kind of sets you up. Um, under Jose, the players weren't built to go and you know get that high press and cover a lot of ground. I think we were ranked one of the lowest teams in the league for distance covered under Jose um, whereas when Oli came in I think then we went straight away to being one of the leading teams for distance covered in games so I think that is the game we're going to look to adopt he's had a good pre-season with him uh, injuries have been relatively okay a few knocks here and there but nothing too serious um, but you know they would have had plenty of rest before reporting back to pre-season as well um, so he's had plenty of time now to implement that kind of style of play he wants to you know take forward to this season as well definitely. Looking at the opposition because it's sort of been gradually getting a little bit better, and yeah. we played against Perth Glory. Obviously, you know, massive levels between Manchester United and Perth Glory. Then there was Leeds United, who are a good Championship team. Then there's Inter, who are a good Serie A team, although they weren't the strongest. Didn't have Icardi, for example. Now you've got Spurs, who are Champions League finalists, sort of arguably the third best team in the Premier League. This is going to offer a real different test than what United have seen. Yeah, definitely. In all of the three previous games to this in pre-season, United have dominated a lot of the possession um, and we've gone able to go and try and, like I said, get that high press on and win the ball back relatively high up the pitch in the opposition half. What I'm interested in to see, because I think Oli will adopt a, a bit more of a, a counter-attacking style of play away from home against the top four or five clubs. So it'll be interesting to see tomorrow if he says to the players, like, we're not going to go and press high, we're going to let them have the majority of the ball and put to test um, that counter-attacking play that, that we saw again uh, with Spurs away at Wembley last season when we went and nicked the win. Um, as I do believe we're going to go and play like that away from home against the top four or five clubs. Again, like I said, I'm looking uh, forward to seeing how we react off the ball, how we set up defensively, um, wan is coming in, I think he's just fitting seamlessly, hasn't he? He's absolutely, absolutely flawless. Um, you know, the spider, you've seen some of them, I think his uh, tackle... Spider, I love that name. Oh, mate, the kind of, his yeah. tackle success <laughs> race has been phenomenal, you know. So, look, I'm interested to see how he fits in uh, tomorrow's against a tougher opposition. Um, it'll be interesting as well to see who he plays as the holding two kind of players in front of the back four. We've seen it be Pogba uh, with uh, McTominay, we've seen Matic in there as well. So it'll be interesting to see who he plays. Does Fred come into it and he pushes Pogba a bit f further forward on as well? Um, I think Steve Housen made a point as well. Pogba's been playing a little bit deeper. Um, you know, he wants to ideally see him playing a bit further up the pitch. Um, but then um, Adam was saying as well on one of the previews that, but what Pogba does do, he's got that kind of ball in his locker to turn defence to attack, you know, because his range of passing is phenomenal. So it would be interesting to see how he's set up in the middle of the park as well. Because you mentioned there that the game against, uh, against Spurs at Wembley. And in many ways, that sort of seemed to symbolise all what Ollie was trying to do, soaking about the pressure, sort of getting Rashford in as well. Yeah. But, People look back at that now and think, was was that sort of almost lucky in a way? Because obviously David De Gea made a lot of saves yeah. and United didn't really build on that, did they? Do you think that sort of going into pre-season, 
you, you're trying different things or do you think this is where you say, right, no, this is the system we're going to play. Stick to this system and go for it. Yeah, I think there comes a point in time where Oli and you know the backroom staff have to say that is our system or this is our system. Whether we're away from home or playing at home, um, this is how we're going to play. One thing I like about the press is the high press is that it puts that opposition under the kind of on the back foot almost straight away. You know, we they know we're prepared to step out of our comfort zone. Uh, a lot of defenders aren't comfortable to play. Uh, you know, when they've got four or five people pressing so high up the pitch, and we've seen it in every game so far where we've been winning the ball so high up the pitch. Um, and that's what I like seeing with this with this kind of new look team that he's putting together. Um, it looks like he wants to kind of adopt that kind of style of play where we go and dominate games and almost kick, especially here, turning Old Trafford into a bit of a fortress where come kickoff the opposition already are on the back foot whereas over the last few seasons we've lost, lost, lost that a little bit with teams coming and actually having a go at us here. Now all he's done is his press conference today when we're recording this I'm just going to read some of what he said. He said it will take time for any player to adjust to United when he's been talking about the new new signings. Apart from me, it took me six minutes in the first game. <laughs> Ollie scored after six minutes on his debut. Um, I'm very happy with the two you've mentioned, that's Alan Wambisaka and Daniel James. We've got to be patient because it's a long haul and it's very important we get the right ones in. We can't just jump on a different path if or when you hit a hurdle. I believe in these players. I'm sure that we could do well, but it's both short-term and long-term. So when we're looking at something, it means we've identified something that could improve us. If it's to be or not to be, let's see, very uh, Shakespearean, to be or not to be, that is the question. Um, now, obviously, he's talking about new signings. How important do you think it is that United do bring in some new signings? Because, yes, we can see why we got Daniel James, and I've been impressed with him. Some people have been questioning him, I think it's nonsense. Yeah. I've been impressed with him, what I've seen. Aaron Wambasaka, we know what he can do in the Premier League, and he seems to have fitted straight in at Manchester United. How important is, though, that United bring in, at least for me, at least two more players? You might think differently, but at least for me, two more. No, I 100% agree with you. I think, look, vitally important, we've got to sign a centre-back. Um, we've known for a couple of seasons now that that should be our main priority. I question why it's taken so long. I know these deals can sometimes, uh, you know, all the different factors that come into play, um, you know, can drag them out a little bit. We know Leicester have come out and also said that they're setting a deadline from their end for a deal to go through, if it is to be Harry Maguire. So I'm sure that the club, they know we need a centre-back. I'm sure Oli's made that clear to them. Uh, but at the same time, look, Tuanzebe's come in. He's looked OK. Um, but again, he's going to need a decision on him of if we bring someone in, does he go and have another season out on loan? Um, I think a midfielder as well after losing Ander Herrera. I think that's a position where we do need, whether it's going to be a defensive midfielder or an attacking midfielder, all depends on where Oli sees someone coming in and fitting into this system. Paul Pogba, if he stays, that all comes into play. But two signings as well. Um, Lukaku's deal seems to be sort of rumbling on now. Is he going? Is he staying? If he goes, I still think we need to bring potentially a third sign of a striker in as well. Um, I think putting that pressure on Marcus Rashford or Martial to play up top all season is going to be um, a big ask. I think we do need someone, maybe with a bit of experience, to come and help them out as well, a bit up there. Bit of maybe not target man as such, but somebody who can compete more in the air, as we know Rashford and Martial like to run in behind and you know uh, kind of stretch defenders in that sense. Can we not just get carried away and say Mason Green was ready? Because Why a lot not? of people <laughs> have been doing it, right? Watching him pre-season, and we all know what Mason Green will do. The academy we've watched him for junior level and seen him score loads of goals. He's got a ridiculous goal-scoring record, and I've been watching him in pre-season. Everyone's been like, he looks all right, he, he looks, looks good, good, but he's yeah. only 17. Let's not get carried away. Do you think that Greenwood, maybe some of the others such as Gomez? Chong, perhaps Ghana can have a big part this season and do you think we'll see them against Spurs? I think we'll see them against Spurs. I think they've got a, a massive part to play this season, especially look, there's going to be a lot of games with the Europa League, EFL Trophy, FA Cup and all the rest of it. I think Oli's going to be um, looking to deploy that kind of squad rotation and use, it'll be horses for courses I think, depending on who the opposition is, uh, I think he'll be happy to change it. One thing I like about this United New Look team again is that, that kind of um, interchanging with the front three, he's quite comfortable to just put three you know, up there and say look I'm happy for you guys to kind of swap uh, kind of wings or, or swap with the front man. Uh, during parts of the game which is good because it adds a bit more of a different dimension to our team we're not looking too rigid um, one thing I want to see in our play though is just a bit more of a quicker tempo when we're in that attacking third team set up you know on the edge of their box with a bank of five and a bank of three or four in front of them and we find it very very hard to break them down um, the second half against Inter Milan when we saw what I thought looked like a weaker team coming on um, they moved the ball very very quickly and opened Inter up uh, Greenwood and Chong I think have come in and, and, and Gomez as well he's come and played that number 10 role as well he's so he's... exciting to watch any Gomez yeah. he almost goes under the radar a little Bit. He does. Such a tricky little player, always likes to get hold of the ball. Definitely, and that's the one thing you just mentioned about getting a hold of the ball. And Greenwood, he's he showed a lot of that as well, where he's ha he's prepared to just have a go. You know, he's confident. I know it's pre-season, but I think Ollie will be encouraging the youngsters to say, look, if you get 
you know, chop down uh, or if you lose possession, just get back up and, and be positive and have another go. It's good to see these guys coming in and being positive, that's that's for sure. There is a lot of positivity about it, isn't there? which is what we like to see pre-season. Obviously, last pre-season, last summer, there was all negativity. Yeah. So it is good to see that everyone's a little bit happier. Um, Going to push you for a prediction. I know it's a friendly and I know it's difficult. We won't get into the starting 11 and all that. We know that a lot of players are going to come in and it's going to be a bit of a change. So we'll just ask you about your prediction. What sort of score do you reckon it's going to be today? Do you see it uh, tomorrow, sorry, do you think it's going to be a close game? I think it will be a close game. Um, I think there might be a couple of guys. I'm going to go for two all. Uh, I think, you know, both teams will maybe look to cancel each other out at points in the game. But I think United, uh, you know, it will be their, their toughest test so far in pre-season. I'm going for two two all draw. I think there'll be a lot of goals in it. I'm going to go for 3-1 United. Peaky, thanks for joining us. Where can people catch you? Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube, guys. It's Peaky Pundit. Uh, also on Instagram and uh, Twitter, at Peaky Pundit. Come check out our content. And also looking forward to the match day vlogs that we'll be bringing uh, with full-time Devils in the new season as well. Yeah, you're going to be doing stuff for, him, for, for Old Trafford from here Definitely. and also on the road as well. So make sure you check out Peaky. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment as well. We'll have a watch along for the Spurs game. We'll also have lots of videos, updates and all the usual previews. Check us out on Instagram. I've been Jay. Thanks for watching.